I mean, the, the this was kind of an unprecedented weather event. It was a very large scale weather event. Um, it should be said it was a well predicted weather event. People knew this was coming, and the authorities had been warning people to stay at home. They closed schools, etc. So this this uh, it was a big event, but people were expecting it. It should be said, of course, that if something like this happens uh, to a city like Dubai, uh, even any modern drainage system would suffer with this, and, and they have suffered tremendously in, in Dubai and in other areas like Oman, of course, it was even worse. In, the, in that part of the world, rainfall usually falls in severe storms and not in the kind of drizzly events that we might have had or have in the UK. So. <clears throat> These are convective systems. They tend to be very intense. They tend to be very small scale, and so, so in some sense, you could argue they're they're used to this, and this is the kind of weather they have. It is mostly dry, but sometimes they have big events like this. Um, an event of of similar size occurred some years ago. So these these things do happen in the in that part of the world. Stuck here. That's what. Uh, then it's gonna like over. I mean, this is the most severe as recorded, of course. Um, it's. Uh, I think the main the main uh, thing of this weather system was that it clearly was a very intense weather system, unprecedented in, in many ways. Uh, but but also the fact that that the most intense rain appeared to concentrate uh, in the Dubai area, where of course the majority of people in the in the Emirates live. So so the impact was always going to be. Uh, um, uh, much more severe than any previous storm, simply of this concentration around that area. It, it does hit hard. The, the, the soil is very dry, quite compact, and frankly, any sort of quite severe rainfall event, the 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 the, 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 the you will have some localized flooding. This is not totally uncommon at all for for even for Dubai. Uh, of course, the level at this time around was uh, was was very very substantial, probably unprecedented. But uh, but uh, yes, the, this is uh, I I wouldn't say it's par for the course, but 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 perhaps I wonder whether the authorities in the in the in the Emirates were as surprised about it as we might uh, as we might have thought. There's several ways of, of approaching cloud seeding, but the, the normal approach is you, you you take a plane up and you spread salts in clouds that might be active, but you suspect will not produce rain. So so in uh, arid regions like like the Middle East, or like the, the Emirates particularly, they have a, an operational cloud seeding program, and what they try and do is they try and target certain clouds that they think uh, uh, might be sensitive to cloud seeding but that, but that they predict would not produce any rain and so they fly out and hope to to induce rain in those clouds any smaller a small additional rain that they that they get in the in those areas is going to be beneficial of course for them and this is also the reason why why cloud seeding has nothing to do with this particular weather event they did not go out cloud seeding this event simply because it would have been totally useless 
they knew there was going to be rain. They had no intention of wanting it to rain more or something. So uh, there was no no interaction of cloud seeding with this particular weather system. The You should realize that cloud seeding operations as they happen now, in fact, they, they always say the, the effects are very hard to measure. In some sense, it's, it's not even very clear whether they are very effective at all. They do invest money in it in, in, in countries like the Emirates simply because any small improvement is going to be of massive benefit for them. But it should be said that the effects are local in time, local in space. We're, we're not talking about weather modification here. Perhaps that's the kind of thing I should say. In the 1950s or 60s, people were still talking about changing weather systems and then sort of doing stuff to the weather. Cloud seeding is not like that at all. This is literally target, trying to target a localized cloud um, in order for it to produce rain because it might otherwise not produce rain. It's a very local, uh, small-scale event. Any effects will, if they occur, any effects, they, they will they will peter out within an hour or something like that. And so, so um, from that point of view, these, um, again, they, they, there is no no relevance of cloud seeding to this this particular event. I mean, in, in terms of the, the that's I, I, I could fairly say somewhat limited effectiveness, limited in the sense that the effects are hard to measure. And from that point of view, it's you know it's it's hard to conceive what what goes from. People are concerned, for example, about the salts that are being spread around. Well, the amount of the salts themselves are are either dry eyes or table salt or silver iodide. These are have no harms to, to, to humans at all. But furthermore, and perhaps even more importantly, the amount that is being used during cloud seeding operations, for example, is so small that it is even hard to measure the concentration above background concentrations. So that's an example of um, this where people have this idea like, oh, well, you're sort of messing around with climate, you're, you're chucking all kinds of stuff in the environment. It's, you know, th this is not at all the level or the scale at, at which we're, we're dealing with here at all.